Greetings everyone. Um, today I'm going to review Stronghold 3 which was released in October 2011. It's the third instalment in a series of uh, castle building simulators from Firefly Studios. Um, whereas the original Stronghold had some really strong personality to it. Um, does Stronghold 3 bring anything new to the table and does it sort of well, does it have the magic that the original game had for me? If you haven't seen it already, I have already did a review of the first game in the series. It might be worth checking out before watching this. But anyway, this is a review of Stronghold 3 for the PC. Stronghold 3, like its predecessors, has a story mode. Three, in fact. The first is a military campaign that can be considered the game's main story. The second is an economic campaign, which is more akin to a sort of Sim City model of gameplay. And the third is an extension of the military campaign, with more focus on battles and sieges. The main story is more or less the same as it was before. Set ten years after the original game, the Baron known as the Wolf is back, and he's out for revenge against the main character. Forging alliances with the sons of his former allies, he sends one of his vassals to dispatch you early on in the game by a nighttime attack. From here, it's typical stronghold fare. You have to rebuild your forces through a variety of levels and scenarios, and dispatch the wolf's allies one by one until you vanquish the man himself. Although the storyline isn't the main reason you play a stronghold game, for some strange reason this really annoys me. I think it's because they've made the fatal error here of trying to be very serious with it. Um, the cutscenes which they provide are very basic, They're, they seem to be co almost concept art which is just done in almost like a PowerPoint presentation and it just really doesn't have that sort of <laughs> excellent narrative that the original had. The story doesn't need to have much depth but if they play it more for laughs it tends to work a bit better. Here there's just no real sense of urgency just simply because you go from one mission to the next. And um, I just don't understand why Firefly would have gone down this route um, with the storyline. It just doesn't make much sense to me. The story mode does present a number of interesting scenarios in which to test your noble skills. As with previous games, the military campaign provides both economic and military hurdles to negotiate. You will be tasked with simply building up an army or taking out a rival stronghold, or you may also be tasked with protecting your people whilst maintaining a strong economy and production of goods. All the while, the happiness of your population is paramount. As insignificant as your peasants may seem to a noble lord such as yourself, maintaining a state of perpetual happiness or dread is paramount to your success. The best way to do this is a combination of low taxes and a good solid food supply. Just like Stronghold 2, Stronghold 3 ditches the isometric 3D perspective of the original game in favour of a fully 3D engine. This has its benefits. You can smoothly zoom in and out in real time allowing you to micromanage events with ease. Your settlement can also be viewed from any angle by holding down the middle mouse button. All of this was present in the original but the sequel refines it and makes it far more useful than it was before. Unfortunately, Stronghold 3, just like Stronghold 2 before it, suffers in two key areas, interface and AI. The interface of the original was mainly focused at the bottom of the screen, with easy access to sliders allowing you to quickly access buildings and the granary. Additionally, you could always click on your neurotic scribe in the corner of the screen to get general information regarding the populace and your foodstuffs. This is no longer the case. Everything is tightly packed into the right corner of the screen and going in and coming out of menus is far more cumbersome than it needs to be. Any RTS lives and breathes on its user interface and how user friendly it is. And whilst the changes may be minor, they are certainly not for the better. And to be honest, I want my scribe back. The AI also has its issues. Although you're easily able to select and control your various troops, they are often unreliable. You'll set their battle stance to attack everything on sight and watch as they simply stand there whilst a pack of wolves ravage your neatly arranged farms. The IO is not broken, it's simply inconsistent and can be worked around by keeping a closer eye on proceedings. These negatives aside, in my opinion Stronghold 3 still has its strengths. Like its predecessors, they come from the free build mode and the economic campaign. This is where I had the most fun with the game and it's great to just plough in a few hours and produce a fully functioning medieval town. 
Building bigger and better houses, churches, whilst keeping the peasants happy gives you a strange sense of contentment which few sandbox games can match in my opinion. There is also the addition of online multiplayer. You can site your castle in real world location and battle against your neighbours. It's functional but I didn't spend much time with it. I'm not the biggest fan of multiplayer in any game as I believe it often hinders immersion as opposed to actually supplying it. Stronghold 3 has adequate gameplay. Uh, since all the patching and everything's taken place, it is a functioning game now. Um, but to be honest with you, I would have preferred if they'd gone down the route of the Sim City model, where it was more about the simulation than the warfare. It, it kind of made, for me, an entire half of the game pretty much redundant. The military campaign I got about halfway through and then just gave up. And it was mainly out of in disinterest and also a combination of just level of frustration. The free build, on the other hand, the free build mechanics where you can just make a castle of your own and, and enjoy just seeing it flourish, that's far more compelling. Also, the economic campaign was a lot more fun. Yeah, um, mainly because uh, you, the computer comes up with obstacles for you. Free play mode's all well and good, but by the time you've got to a huge settlement, there's not much else to do. Whereas here, in economic mode, the, you know, it could be things like wolves or pestilence or things like that that you've got to go up against. You could have a time limit, or you could have a certain amount of materials and things to, um, to, to put in your stockpile to complete the level. And that was far more fun. I, I mean, I really do wish if they do make another one, they go less on the combat and more on the castle simulation. You know, you could have more things like um, irrigation and you could have um, sewage outlets and things like that. You can make that far more complex and then rein in the um, combat mechanisms. Maybe focusing on defence, which seems to be a bit more manageable in this game than, than actual offence against a castle. The presentation of the game is a real mixed bag. Whilst buildings and farms are both well designed and well realised, and occasionally pretty to look at, the actual character models can be downright ugly at times, and it's no way representative of the rest of the game. When the game is set to fall, there is an impressive level of detail, although even with the highest settings there is still some visible popping when you're zooming in and out of the map. Firefly have done a good job of adding additional atmosphere via some impressive lighting, fogging and weather effects, combined with a day and night cycle. However, this is completely undermined by the fact that there are no transitions at all. It's kind of jarring when you're playing the game and it's set in the middle of the night and it's raining and then suddenly it's just a balmy day. It's as though somebody's just remembered to pay the electricity bill. What a lovely day it is today, sire. Still, the graphics are a significant step up from the previous games, if not displaying the same character and charm of the original with its cartoony looks and design. The music for the game is brilliant, using a combination of compositions from the original game and new ones specifically made from this game, Stronghold 3 succeeds in painting a picture of idyllic medieval life and also the heart pounding gusto of warfare. The voice acting is also strong, it salvages the melodramatic script from the jaws of its own mediocrity. The voice of the scribe returns at least, even though he's not represented on screen anymore. The new scribe isn't as neurotic as his predecessor, being more pompous and class orientated, but still he's fun to listen to. Peasants beseech us to send some troops to protect them. Real-time strategy games don't really benefit all that much from high frame rates, and that's a good thing when it comes to the performance of Stronghold 3, at least in high settings. On my gaming laptop with its i7 processor, 16GB of RAM and GTX 675M, I was able to achieve around 60 frames a second in non-chaotic moments, with dips to around 44 frames a second when I was dealing with a large settlement. However, pairing back the um, eye candy a bit, particularly with the shadows, did give me around a 10 to 7 frame boost, so it's certainly worth considering. With those with a more humble laptop, maybe with integrated graphics, you're probably going to have to play this at quite low settings in order to achieve a good frame rate. I tried it at high settings on my integrated graphics solution, which is an Intel 3000, and I was only able to achieve around 14 to 20 frames a second, which for an RTS is mm, borderline unplayable in my opinion.
So what did I think of Stronghold 3? Well, it's it's a bit of a tough one really. It's hard to distill why you like a game sometimes. And the Stronghold series, particularly the original two games, Stronghold and Stronghold Crusader, for me have a sort of special place in my heart. And I think no matter what Firefly did, I probably wouldn't have been too happy with it. Needless to say, it, it's a it's an adequate game since it's been patched. It offers some multiplayer options and there are quite a few ways in which you can go about playing the game. You've got military campaigns, you've got economic campaigns and you've got free build, but none of this was missing really from the original aside from multiplayer. And it's just, this doesn't bring anything to the table. That's the problem. In fact, it almost feels like a regression. It feels like Stronghold 1 and Stronghold 2 pretty much mash together and um, it just doesn't have that really nice humour level which, which I liked in the first game and it just goes to show that you don't have to have fancy graphics to have a great game. Stronghold, as I say, the original, I think still holds up very well today with its art style. Here, it Stronghold's like a Monet, it looks great from a distance, but you zoom right in, it doesn't look all that spectacular at all. Particularly when you're comparing it to something like, say, Shogun or, or something like that. Admittedly, Firefly haven't got the budget to come up with a Shogun Total War, but maybe the 3D engine was a mistake. Maybe if they did a high-res um, HD version of the original, I probably would have been more happy. But I have to stress, this isn't a bad game at all. It just the story and everything didn't have me hooked the way in which the original game did. So I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. There's nothing particularly wrong with it. It's an adequate game. And for fans of the series, it's definitely worth playing. Um, you know, it's, it, in some instances it's really nice to see uh, the whole 3D environment. And um, I just wish they made better use of the combat mechanics. They still feel as though they're stuck in the late 90s as far as that's concerned and maybe just focus a bit more on the, the castle building aspect of it. If they'd made a Sim City medieval, um, not like the Sims medieval, but a Sim City medieval kind of out of this, I probably would have been a lot more happy managing your estate, a lot more depth uh, than what they go into here. But maybe that could have made the game a little bit less accessible to others. So 3.5 out of 5, it's nothing special, but if you see it on discount and you were a fan of the series, I'd definitely say pick it up. I really hope they make another in this series. There isn't, still isn't anything really quite like it for me um, out there. There's, there's nothing that comes close to Stronghold in, in terms of that sort of castle building environment. It, other games, RTSs, and, uh, they tend to focus more on the bigger picture, the empire, rather than the, the sort of settlement. And I, I really enjoy the time period. And I still think the music in this game absolutely kicks ass. If they'd come up with a CD of the music, I probably would have bought it. But anyway, make of it what you will. Stronghold 3 is an average game. So there's not a lot more I can say on that. But um, I hope you've enjoyed the review, and this was a reaction uh, to one of my subscribers, you know who you are. And if you have any um, suggestions as to what I should review over the next few weeks, let me know and I'll try and fit it in with the, the schedule. Anyway, I'm a Laptop Gamer, and I'll see you next time.